Good morning, everybody. He is Neil McGovern, and he'll be talking about Lenny, the road to release. Thank you. Um, <coughs> good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for turning up at this uh, this time in the morning. Um, I didn't find out that I was meant to be speaking on any of this until uh, a couple of days after I've arrived, so uh, apologies. It's uh, a little bit hurriedly put together. But um, I'm here to talk about um, our release process and um, Lenny and what we can all do to help try and get Lenny out the door, hopefully on time and uh, with sufficient quality that uh, it helps everyone here. So a quick introduction as to who we are. Um, we've got three types of, uh, three what we call types of people in the release team. Uh, we have release managers, release wizards and release assistants. Um, so quickly, uh, these are the current release managers. Uh, we have various people there. I don't think we actually have any of them here uh, because it looks like Luke Class hasn't actually bothered to turn up for the talk he put me down to speak at. Um, but anyway, uh, we have our various release managers. They look after the release, make sure it happens. Um, they also have various powers to do things like um, run a block hole hint, which has happened recently, which has made us freeze, um, so packages don't actually go into testing. After that we have the release wizards. This is currently uh, Abba and uh, Volon. Uh, this is normally reserved for people who used to be release uh, managers but have uh, now decided not to um, carry on in that role. We now just call them wizards because they go and do the magic stuff that actually makes release stuff happen when the managers and the assistants have no idea what's going on, which is most of the time to be honest. And then finally at the end you get us little uh, workers, the release assistants. We end up doing quite a lot of the work, processing uh, hints, making sure unblocks go through. Um, and recently um, quite a few of us have also been given access to the wanna build system, um, which means we can schedule bin MMUs for in case there were any compile time problems, etc. And uh, generally help for various binary transitions that need to happen. And we do have one of them there, Wave. It's Phil Kern at the back there. Um, who you'll find on the right-hand side there. Very fetching. Anyway, so we have now frozen. Now, what does this mean? This means we have no automatic updates to testing. Um, we actually pay attention to the one of the queues um, in DAC on FTP Master is called testing proposed updates. It's used to put packages straight into testing without going viral unstable if required. This isn't normally used that much, um, except during the freeze. Obviously during the freeze, if something can't go in via unstable, which is our preferred route, then it has to go in via um, testing proposed updates. Um, normally, as a maintainer or a developer, you shouldn't be uploading to that unless you've contacted the release team first, and we'll explain uh, what you need to do and, and how to do that. Um, and the I also need to mention the uh, not testing release team, but the testing security team. Um, I did write these slides quite late. Um, they're giving a lot more work to do um, to make sure that all the open security um, bugs are fixed in uh, the next release. They run the various systems like uh, the uh, security tracker and various items like that. Um, if you do have a package that has a security bug that you want to make sure gets into uh, that the fix gets into Lenny, then you should talk to them. Uh, I think it's uh, testing-security at lists.debian.org. Um, so normally you can offer advice on what to do and help get this uh, fix into Lenny for you. So, unblocks. This is what people are mostly asked for on our lists anyway. I should point out that this image was one of the first ones on Google Image Search when I searched for unblock, so I thought it may be fairly poignant to insert it here. So, firstly, we like to say yes for Unblocks. We do want to see the latest software and sort of the best software available in, uh, in Lenny if we can, um, while maintaining stability. So yes, you can have them for RC bugs. Uh, any fixes for those are generally considered good. And for release goals, you can find the, our list of goals on release.debian.org, but these should be non-invasive. Uh, for severity important, for um, severity important bugs for priority optional and extra. You can have them, but only if it goes viral unstable, then again, it's fairly non-invasive. 
Um, translation updates, documentation updates are also allowed because they generally don't touch the actual code base. Um, they're, they're normally non-breaking changes, so they're normally fine. And uh, pre-approved fixes, so stuff we've already said uh, okay to. Now to get that, you, you basically, if you talk to us on um, debian-release at list.debian.org, then you can get, um, then we, it, it's um, a good way to get any um, particular fixes you have in mind. Um, generally the most important thing is just to talk to us and get information about what you'd like in there. So, how to ask for changes. Generally, you mail Debian release at list or Debian in the org. I will be repeating this quite a few times because this is the most important thing I can um, stress throughout this talk is that you talk to us and we uh, are able to work out what's going on. Having random patch, uh, patch sets arrive and we have no idea what's going on and then um, people ask us to unblock them doesn't really work too well. Um, so don't make first one is don't make unrelated changes. You should only make changes for the fixes that uh, you, you want in. So don't rebuild the package, change to CDBS from Deb Helper, introduce a new patch system, and yes, I have all seen these in the past week. Um, and explain why you need it. So we want to see bug numbers, Deb diffs, change log extracts. Um, just saying, please unblock X is normally not good enough because we have no idea why or what it fixes, and it creates a lot more work for us at a time when we're all really quite busy anyway. Um, Normally mentioning the package name is helpful as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names, but normally um, telling us what you'd like unblocked is um, quite useful. And again, if in doubt, just uh, mail us and ask us. Uh, we also have a RC channel, which I'll get to in a bit, but the preferred method of contact is, is via the mailing list. So, what you don't get unblocks for. Things like the top one, where we have 12,000 insertions and 7,000 deletions across uh, almost 100 files. This generally doesn't get an unblock unless there's a very good reason. The issue with unblocking things is we have to review the change set between each of those. And if we have that much to do, generally we'll just say no because we don't have time to go through all of that unless there's a very good reason and it's been very explicit. Um, bumping Debian Compact can cause interesting effects, even if you go from very low number to the latest number. This does change the build system and how things work. Uh, it's generally frowned upon to change that unless it's been extensively tested. And again, you should mention this in your mail to us. If you do have to bump it for a good reason, then, then just tell us and we'll, s we'll see what we can do with that. Um, NMU seem to be overwritten. D try not to redact the change logs and um, ignore previous NMUs, try and acknowledge them and use the latest versions. Um, for example, changing the build system again is another example of something uh, that shouldn't be done. New binary packages introduced, new upstream versions. Generally try and keep your change sets and, and the delta between the two fairly small and then we should be able to include it in the next release. So if we have uh, what we call stuck packages, um, items which Normally, we, we prefer everything to go via unstable. Sometimes this obviously isn't possible, which is why we have testing proposed updates. Um, so sometimes you can't put your package through unstable. Uh, examples of this would be if there's unsuitable changes already in unstable, like you've got a new three new upstream versions sat there compared to the version in Lenny, and it's just been uploaded and there's a problem, or there's a big library transition and there's an incompatible change make. Now, to get around this, you can update via testing proposed updates, as I mentioned, uh, which will put an item straight into uh, testing, so it won't go via unstable with the normal routes. Um, it will get auto-built, but it's very important that you contact us, especially as if we try and... If, if we see a package come into testing proposed updates and we're not sure what um, architectures it's built for, we all get a bit confused as the way testing proposed updates works currently is that it will just put the package straight into testing without checking that all the architectures are there and then you end up with quite a broken package. So it is very important that you talk to us and tell us what's going on and check that we can um, put things straight into testing for you that way. So removals. This one's caused quite a bit of discussion recently on various lists. Um, the most important thing to remember is RC bugs equals removals. Just make sure that your RC bugs are fixed or you're uh, mailing the bug regularly and that, that we can see that there's some progress going on. Um, 
optional and extra. If it's RC buggy for greater than a week, it's subject to removal. Uh, again, for the others, if it's great if, if it's RC buggy for more than 20 days and there's no activity, if it's a leaf package, etc., these are all subject to removal. That said, there is no guarantee that any package will necessarily ship with Lenny. Um, if it's buggy or if there's other problems with it, um, then it may get removed. And it's important to note that we don't take removals lightly. That there is always various reasons for it, and there's discussions on on the lists about um, that. I'm sure everyone will be able to find about why packages were removed. A uh, new policy, which we I'm not sure is official yet, but it's all been brought up, is that if it's been orphaned for more than two releases, this is similar to the new FTP master policy of dropping an ar archive out of the architecture if it's not been there for a couple of releases. Uh, a new one is we had a look at the huge amount of orphan packages that just haven't seen any updates or any uploads. Um, it doesn't seem anyone cares about them because no one's maintaining them. So if it's been missing for more than or equal to two releases, then it's uh, subject to get dropped out of the archive altogether. Um, now, if a package has been removed recently and you have a particular update, so if it's been RC buggy or fails to build from source and you have a fixed package that does this, if you then upload it to Unstable, it will be blocked and it won't be going into testing. That's normal. If it's fairly recently, so we can see it's only recently gone, so there won't be too much regression, if you mail us and ask us again, we can always get it pushed back in. Once again, important thing is mail and ask us. Now, I keep talking about these RC bugs because it is one of the most important things we have for Lenny. It's, it's one of the main criteria that we shouldn't have any RC bugs when we ship. And this is the sort of current status. We do have, uh, as of last night, uh, 378 RC bugs still open, uh, which is quite a few, really. If we have a look at the quick graph, it's that. Now, this has led some people to work out when we'll release and try and work out various dates based on that. And the current thinking is uh, 2009-06, which is a little bit delayed from what we'd have preferred, thanks to that man, Mr. Bastian, anyway. So the realistic question is, when do we release? There's a couple of different methods of, of trying to work out when we release. There's our original timeline, which says we'll release in three weeks. Now, with about 380 RC bugs, that's uh, approximately um, 130 a week or so. So, 20 odd a day. So who feels like fixing some RC bugs? To meet a three week deadline, we'd have to fix about 20 RC bugs a day and not get the rest of them done, which is quite a sobering prospect. I certainly didn't realize that um, we'd be quite so up against the wall in terms of time. Unfortunately, the various uh, release, um, announcements have said we're due to release in internally. They've said we're due to release in September. So that's another, that's another couple of weeks, five weeks. Still not too long. The official release announcements have said we're due to release in the second half of 2008. So we can still meet that by quite some way. But the most important thing is to get this RC bug count down. So to get them fixed and not introduce any more, hopefully. So a bit of contact information. There's firstly our website, which is release.debian.org. This contains uh, various bits and pieces of information, our policies, uh, a little bit about the architectures, which I will mention, um, and what release goals we have, what we consider um, RC buggy, um, etc. Um, there's the mailing list, which is should be a primary contact point for the release team. Uh, it will allow you to ask for unblocks, it will allow you to ask questions. Uh, it's the preferred method of communicating with us. And we also have the um, hash Debian release um, channel on irc.debian.org, where there's normally a few of us around. Um, I should though point out for unblock requests should definitely go to the list. Um, there's various information in the topic there that, that will might redirect you to various other places, so please read that. But if you just want an informal chat or, or just to work out um, what we're talking about, then then that's a useful one. And unfortunately, um, with 15 minutes in, I seem to have run out of slides. I did say this was uh, a rather rushed up talk. Um, so I suppose I should 
open the floor to any questions or any particular concerns anyone has. If not, I will be dragging up one of the other release assistants to give some more talk. Ah, we do have a question. <laughs> Is this book? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question because um, I noticed that um, I was using one package on a server and was not aware on, on Edge and was not aware that it was removed uh, for Lenny because of um, our C bug. Mm -hmm. So uh, I took over the package and it's fine now and it is fine for me personally, but it, it shouldn't be shouldn't be a release goal to uh, take at least those packages which are running on Edge uh, to keep if they are now in a good shape, but was not before the freeze? Um, so the, the question is, uh, should we make sure that we don't lose any packages between releases? Yeah, to, to enable uh, smooth upgraders for, for um, users. That's an interesting one. If, if we carry on along that set, then we can never get uh, um, rid of old packages. For example, uh, the GTK transition from GTK 1 to 2. Uh, some packages just haven't Aren't, don't seem to be interested in, in performing that. Uh, for example, XMMS is going to be stuck with GTK1, and we can't keep that released. Um, of course, we do like to try and ensure that functionality exists between releases or equivalent packages are there. Um, you can run on your own system if you are running any. I think it's um, RC alert which will tell you if items are RC buggy. Yeah, I, I learned this functionality uh, uh, just yesterday. So. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, it is great that we have the scripts, but, yeah. Again, yeah, that could be uh, probably documented better. Um, mm. But again, it's, it's, it's taking the view, if, if, if there is a package that's really important mm. to you, or anything but, but particular... I mean, the, the situation is different between I know the GTK1 issue and the XMOS issue. It is n not, uh, fixed not yet. This, these packages are broken anyway, but if we now realize that we, we could get a package in good shape, which was in Edge and just was lost in space and nobody cared about it, but we have now a good package. Would it be uh, make sense to put it in the release or, or not? It, it may be possible, yes. Um, it depends on why it was removed, if those are fixed, mm. and it was fairly recently removed. Um, so if it now seems that there's quite a, little, a lot of uh, uh, interest in the package, then, mm. then it could be reintroduced. Yeah, it, it's it, not a lot who is in interested in so. Yeah, it, uh, it, does have to be taken on quite a case-by-case -case okay. basis. Mm. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah it's, there, have, there have been an, an idea about what uh, Andreas just said. Um, it would be to add a cron script in dev scripts, so everybody, every developer, every developer would have it running on his machine to monitor uh, the newly, the new RC bugs or the newly orphaned packages amongst the packages that are locally installed. So that would allow every, uh, well, every everybody in interested in Debian development to have an overview of what is currently going to be broken amongst the package that he uses. Because currently it's true that it's really hard to have a, a view, a global view of that. So if, well, currently that's, it's quite controversial because people say that we shouldn't add a current job to dev scripts, et cetera, et cetera. But, well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, what's the majority of people who will think probably it will just be a matter of uh, uh, the one who can do it will do it and it will be disabled by default or enabled by default, but this, you could disable it. Well, yes, I uh, certainly remember that we had, well, we certainly used to have a list of RC bugs go to DDA, I think it was, um, until there was complaints that people were getting too, many, too much information about RC bugs, which I'm not quite sure how is so important. Uh, if you can't get too much information about it, one of the main things I, I would like to push is that release critical bugs mean that your package will not ship with the next stable release. Um, if you have an RC bug, it is important that it gets fixed, and it gets fixed promptly. Th these are bugs that are so severe that the package will not ship. We, it just won't ship. We won't support it for the users. So it is something that does need fixing. And to try and cement that in minds of everyone would be very, very useful for us. Uh, again, this is now in, I believe it now goes to Debian Devel. Um, does it? The 
Sometimes it goes to Debbie Neville. Um, I'm actually, that's uh, Steiner Gunderson who's done most of the hard work on the RC bug alert, well, the debug side of that. Um, so I, I'm, I'd have to check again where exactly it's going. The reason why we didn't send it uh, to DDA is because it and I think it was the WMPP alert was all stuck together and people just drowned in it. They didn't actually ever look at the RC bugs that were there. They just sort of said, yeah, okay, it's the same email again this week, delete, or you know, mark is read, and no one really paid much attention to it. So rather than flooding DDA with information that no one looked at, um, it was decided to split it would be better. Yeah, so, so one thing I, w I would like to try and get done is, to, is once these RC bugs get low and get to zero so we can release, is then try and keep it at a very low level. So when RC bugs do occur, it should be quite an unusual event and they do get fixed quickly, um, trying to keep this count low so we don't go up to a, a few so, you know, above 500 or 600 or so because then when you get to that sort of scale, it, it just gets lost in the noise that there's so many RC bugs and people don't know where to start. So trying to keep these at a manageable level and make sure the RC bugs really get fixed as soon as possible then could be useful. Yeah, if I could go back to, to the DevScript's RC alert. Um, one of the other things that you can easily do is just look at the overview of your own packages at qa.debian.org. Um, I mean, I assume almost everybody, does anybody here not know about that? No, okay, I didn't think so. So, I mean, far more useful than the cron job because you can look at it when you have a time. Um, and I don't know, I have dev scripts installed on about 20 machines, each of which has mail. I don't need the same message 20 times a, a week, so. <laughs> Well, I think that the, the problem that we're trying to solve here is that most developers only care about their own packages, and we're trying to get developers to care about at least the package that they use, but they're not maintaining. So that would be the point of having such a cron job, because on your DDPO page, you only see... Yeah, sure, it's easy to write yourself, but if you provide it, well, uh, Don's point was everybody could write it... Uh, yeah, okay, I know it's wine line. But if you, well, if you have that script, you can then um, improve it and get more, in, more useful information in it, like the list of packages that were removed from testing and that are uh, still unstable and that you use. So, well, um, and if you, if you provide it, then people will run it. If you ask people to write it and to uh, enable it themselves, some people will do that, but most people won't do just uh, no, no, um, perhaps not. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, uh, um, as uh, Lucas said, you, you have to have this script and you have to advertise the scripts uh, because uh, until yesterday I wasn't aware that there were such scripts and I just found uh, four packages I could easily take over, which I do not make much work, with, but I, I just use it and they are all orphaned. And if we would uh, add to the, the mon uh, monthly posting, uh, which work should be done, I don't know how they are called on Debian Debian, just run this script or if, if we enable this by Conjob or make some more noise about this, uh, we, we could get much more input by developers who, who just not know what, what happens in this case. Okay, so there's... Um Various useful scripts we've got. Um, I mean, how many people read the release updates that we send to Debian Devel announce? Hopefully once a month. It's quite a few. And how many people read right to the end of those? <laughs> a few less. We always try and include now a, a little snippet at the end with uh, hints for developers that mention various uh, hints and tips. So we've got uh, various scripts and items like that. I'm not sure if RC Alert has the RC bug alert has been included, but certainly others have. Uh, possibly not putting them right at the end is, is the best, but that's normally where we release the, the uh, normally where we announce the code names for the next releases as well. So we do try and keep a little bit of motivation for everyone to read them. Okay. Is that working? Okay. Uh, some, <laughs> some another topic. I just mentioned a comment by Zobel on IRC. He mentioned that uh, maybe not all RC buggy packages will be removed, such mm. as build as essential or such stuff. Anyway, that was a side comment. Another topic I wanted to raise, 
uh, I'm not a specialist of this, but I not I've not heard about it. Is the kernel and the I? What are their place in that release process? Uh, I'm quite worried about these topics currently. The I has been released quite two months ago. <laughs> it's not yet released and not yet really released with the 2626 two kernel. So how would that fit in a three weeks process? Um, yes, again, this has also been, as I'm sure if people read the release list and the DI list and Debian boot, it's, it's, it's very a, it's quite a contentious issue. Um, working out, we, we have three different uh, camps which are involved quite heavily in the release. We have uh, the release team, which is obviously managing the uh, general infrastructure of uh, the release and, and what packages go in. We have the DI team who are managing the installer and we have the kernel team who are trying to stabilize on a particular kernel. Now, within those three teams, we can easily have six or seven different opinions as to what we should do, especially with the, the latest what version of kernel we should have and um, how that manages with the DI team. At the moment, certainly the release team, we try and work closely with the DI team as close as we can. Um, again, yeah, it can uh, be. The main problem I see is that the DI team is currently shrinking a lot. I think that some of you have seen Joey S announcement on, uh, on his blog. Uh, Franz Pop also mentioned uh, some stuff that it will not work that much for the Dylan Lenny release. So I would like to, 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 to raise something here. Uh, DI is not that ready for release and we probably need a lot more manpower and testing, testing, testing anything for DI because my current feeling, that's maybe personal, is the current DI is not as good as the Edge installer was. It's probably more buggy. So we are likely to release with a more buggy DI if nothing more happens. And Otavio is doing a great job. Jeremy Bobbio also is doing a great job with DI, but mostly alone, which did not happen in the past. In the past, there were more people involved in DI. So, so one particular question and would um, possibly working out why at this stage, three weeks before the planned release date, uh, it is buggy. Um, I don't know, was it a surprise that we should be releasing actually this time? Have people been assuming that the deadline we set wasn't a real deadline or, or, or what? I don't think there is any surprise here. Uh, this is more or less something we could suspect already. One year ago, the demand power in the eye was already starting to decrease and well, this is something you can do that much. If the manpower is decreasing, you cannot bring easily more people around. Yeah. So we were suspecting that already. The, the DI releases, they were beta one, beta two, they were planned to be very close mm -hmm. together. And there was like three months between yeah. two. So that was also ex already a signal. And the RC1 is nearly ready, but certainly not for three weeks. Schedule, I think. Uh, I, I tried to bring Otavio on IRC, but he's not around. So uh, I make this comment on my own, and I'm not the DI release manager, but yeah. I'm f feeling quite unsafe on that topic. Sorry for the delay, Margaret. On a more lightly subject, if we are three weeks or a month or two months away from the release, we will need a new name in three weeks, a month, two months. Do you have the name? Now, I, before I uh, was uh, brought up to this talk this morning, I, I was asked by uh, Clint on IRC um, what the release name for Lenny is going to be. Um, so I can now tell you, Clint, that the release name for Lenny is Lenny. Um, <laughs> he did ask for it. Um, Unfortunately, I have absolutely no idea. Um, this is one for the release managers um, in their shiny purple suits. That lot, they get to decide uh, who the release managers are. Um, namely, the um, ones at the um, right hand side and at the front. That's uh, Luke and HE uh, get to decide what the next one's going to be. I know that um, at the previous FOSDEM meeting, uh, we did have HE was asking for the release to be called RC Buggy. Um, 
but that does seem to have been linked to experimental now by our lovely FTP masters at the back. Um, especially uh, Ganef there, who I'm sure is going to give you a nice big wave. Um, there's been various other ones um, talked about, but honestly, I have absolutely no idea what it's going to be. I believe there was a slight issue with the etch release. Um, one of the reasons the current BTS um, command uh, BTS system doesn't recognise the tag Lenny Ignore is, I believe, because uh, we didn't tell anyone the name of the next release until after etch was shipped or something. So th there may be a problem with that. Yeah, so someone has to tell on. Um, but again, I have absolutely no idea, I'm afraid. So, anyone else? Well, um, I don't know if you read my blog post of this week, which I will try to summarize. Um, I'm, I feel that uh, we are... Um, wait, um, you, you tr the release team tends to treat DDs uh, uh, bad by default, which is quite strange. For example, you ask for uh, reviews of everything that we want to get into Lenny. Mm -hmm. and it's funny because in other projects, usually, the social pressure of the other developers is enough, even if big in big projects like GNOME, the social pressure is enough to make DD do the to make developers do the right thing about um, getting things into in, in stable release. I mean, if in GNOME someone tries to push changes that are really clearly too much for the next release, it just gets flamed, and that's enough to 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 prevent him from doing it. And in Debian, what we do is we we put a lot of load on the release team to review even minor packages that mostly nobody cares about. And that's quite interesting that we can't solve this socially and we have to use a technical solution for that. Yep. Um, I certainly read the blog post. Uh, I haven't had time to actually think about it much yet. Um, I was busy sticking um, Hakagotchi heads on random photos instead of uh, trying to prepare the rest of the talk, as you can probably tell. Uh, now, all these issues mentioned here were found in one package. Um, that was Astro and Unblock. Um, if it is, I, I think this is, it is possibly a social problem. Uh, I don't necessarily agree that uh, it's a technical hack around the social problem. Um, I do know a lot, a lot of release systems do involve uh, code reviews and code freezes uh, to try and make sure that there's a period of stabilization. Um, if we can get all maintainers uh, paying more attention to the fact that s only small changes and disru non disruptive changes are needed and that all RC bugs have been fixed, then that would make our life a lot easier. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm not sure it does exist. Um, is this something that can be solved easily? Um, I'm not sure. Um, certainly for the moment, uh, the freeze is something we've brought in, to, we brought in quite a while ago to have a period of stabilization. Um, if it can be solved um, by peer pressure, well, that would certainly be interesting. I, I'm not sure how well that scales with the amount of uh, developers we have. Just a um, question uh, directly related to that. How many, what's the average percentage of act rejects that for uh, propagation? Um, off the top of my head, I'd say probably about estimate. About 80%, say, um, get accepted. Um, so, so that basically goes directly at the whether or not we can remove the technical restrictions. So there's 20% of people who don't quite know what should be put in or not. So then the question is, how do we work out what that 20% is without creating an unstable testing version? Right. And also, I mean, how to avoid, because making changes is a good thing. I mean, we don't want to necessarily discourage that. We just want people right. to realize that, hey, this change is destabilizing. Upload to experimental or something. I mean, has anyone noticed that there's been any particular big delays with getting stuff unblocked? 
it could only take a few days or even a week to get something unblocked, which is uh, not that much, but it's not zero delay as well. C considering we have two years between releases. Right, well, and, and also considering that so long as the unblock happens faster than the mandatory delay period in testing anyway, or in unstable anyway, it doesn't really make a difference. So, I mean, considering most of the packages are uploaded with the 10 day delay, then so long as it happens within 10 days, it's, it's fine. Also, I should point out for larger packages, we are, uh, now I think it's, since the last release, we, we now have a new hint called age days. So certainly with some larger packages which we normally wouldn't accept, we can say set the age days to 30 or so, or any particular longer value, which would help give them more stabilization before they enter testing. So, so that's also another possibility. So um, uh, uh, maybe a difference uh, 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 between uh, the social pressure in Debian and in, uh, say, GNOME, uh, is that uh, in GNOME, every GNOME developer cares about the whole of GNOME, more or less. Um, I don't think that many people uh, uh, in Debian uh, w would care, for, for, for example, uh, the proof assistant packages that I maintain uh, in Debian. Uh, they care, uh, uh, what they think about uh, is, I don't know, um, for example, uh, web applications, and they, they have no knowledge or interest in that kind of applications. Um, GNOME uh, 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 is less, uh, is less uh, diversified. Uh, again, yes, um, this is possibly a problem. We, I, am, I, th I think we're starting to see a, a larger move towards team-maintained packages, um, generally a, a larger team-oriented way of developing things. Uh, there's a lot less emphasis, there seems to be, to me, a lot less emphasis of a particular uh, package maintainer's package is, is their domain and, and no one else can touch it. Uh, there's been certainly quite a bit of um, emphasis on NMUs are, are not bad, uh, there are other people trying to, to help your problems, and a, a various wide-ranging things which, which happen across, across the board. Um, so hopefully this, this will certainly help and people will become more aware of our overall goal, which, although some people may not agree with it, um, is to actually, well, in my opinion, is to actually release and, and get a release out to our users. Um, that's certainly one of my priorities anyway. Um, so we've got uh, about 10 minutes left now, so um, anyone, any other questions or anything? I guess not, so uh, thank you very much, everyone.